For this example, we're going to try to find the Maclaurin series for f of x equals cosine x, the Maclaurin series for the cosine function. So obviously what we're going to try to do is write cosine in terms of some uh, series type of notation, but we have to figure out what that would be. So obviously the place we're going to begin is just kind of the basic template of a Taylor series. And re recall a, Taylor, a Maclaurin series is basically just a Taylor series that's centered at zero. So we are starting with this basic template. Uh, the only thing that we know right off the bat is that the C's are both zero. Um, if it had been a Taylor series, they would have had to tell us where it was centered. and We would have had to adjust these C values accordingly. Okay, but um, where we'll start is uh, we, we know that most of this is set for every Taylor series. Most of this doesn't change. All Taylor series have an n factorial. All Taylor series have an x minus c to the n. It's this part that depends on f that's going to be different in one problem versus another problem. So we will actually go ahead and find the first few derivatives of cosine. And so f of x is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Second derivative is negative cosine. Third derivative is positive sine. And we could keep going if we needed to. You can do as many of these as you want to until you feel comfortable with the pattern. Now the thing is, is I don't need these in the uh, Taylor series. I need these evaluated at the center and our center is at zero. So I'm gonna take all these guys here and evaluate them all at zero. Cosine of zero is one, sine of zero is zero, negative cosine of zero is negative one, and again, sine of zero makes zero. So we get one, zero, negative one, zero. Now pick this example on purpose because it's a little weird having these zero guys in here. We're not really sure how to handle those. Um, so that's, the, that's why I picked this example uh, intentionally. So whenever you're confused about the pattern, what you might wanna do is actually write down this pattern for the first few terms to help you see the pattern a little bit more clearly. So it goes one, zero, negative one, zero. So this, that's the way the terms go. So let me go back to my cosine graph, uh, cosine function here. So the, the coefficients go uh, one, zero, negative one, zero. But remember, this is one over zero factorial times x minus zero to the zeroth power, and then zero over one factorial x to the first, and then a negative one over two factorial x minus zero to the second, zero over three factorial x minus zero to the third power, and so on and so forth. Now you say, Devin, where are you getting that from? Well, remember, this is the general pattern of a Taylor series. I'm taking that uh, sequence of terms, that one, zero, negative one, zero, that's in the numerator. N factorial is in the denominator, so it goes zero factorial, one factorial, two, three, four, five factorial in the denominator. And whatever that factorial N value was, that's the same as the exponent for X minus zero. So we have X to the zero, X to the first, X to the second, X to the third that matches the zero factorial, one, two, and three factorial. So this is the Maclaurin series for cosine, but that's a mess. Uh, I see a lot of things. First of all, I see that these terms were zero. Zero times anything is zero. So every other term is automatically gone. So it looks like we're only getting every other term here. Now what would every other term look like? Well, let's write this down a little bit more explicitly. Zero factorial by definition is one. One over one is one. X to the zero is one. So this is just a one. This term's gone because of the zero. This t term here is minus, because of the negative, x squared over two factorial. Okay, so that's pretty clear from here. Now, I've only done four terms and I could have done more if I needed, but let's see if we can guess what the next term would be. All right, so we had a term zero, a term zero. So I think we're due up for a term again, but for instance, what do you think the denominator would be? Well, it went zero, two, probably four, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. So we'd have a plus 
something over 4 factorial and then what about the numerator? What well, went positive 1, negative 1. This time it's going to be a positive 1. Next time it'll be a negative 1. X to the what? Well, it looks like every one of these exponents matches the factorial numerical value in the bottom, the, the highest, um, the n, basically. So if this is 2 factorial, this is x to the second, so on and so forth. So this is probably x to the fourth because that's a 4 factorial. And I think these guys will just continue to alternate sign minus x to the uh, 6 over 6 factorial plus x to the 8th over 8 factorial minus x to the 10th over 10 factorial plus dot dot dot. And so that, that's the pattern. Now if you look at that and you say, well Devin, uh, you did some reaching there. How, how do you know that? I mean, you, you, you're assuming lots of things because you only effectively got two terms. I know we did four, but effectively you only got two. I would say just keep doing more terms. If you're not convinced, then don't stop. Uh, we did these four terms. Do five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten terms. Do as many as you need until you are convinced of the pattern. But I feel fairly comfortable with this pattern here. And so now that I see them with my eyes, now let me see if I can write this as some sort of Taylor series. So we'd have the sum n equals zero to infinity. And let, let me just look at this guy. Let me look at the line above. Uh, a couple of things I see is that this guy alternates in sign plus minus plus minus. That tips me off right off, uh, right off the bat that I'll probably have a minus one to the n. You remember those are the guys that go plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, etc. And now how do I deal with only getting even powers? Notice I have 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, but I don't have 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. I don't have those terms. So if you only want the even powers, n, by the way, is ranging over all numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But how do you only get the evens out of that? Let me show you you'd write x to the 2n. So let's run through the first few terms. You'd get x to the 0. Then when n is 1, you get x to the 2nd. When n is 2, you get x to the 4th. When n is 3, you get x to the 6th, then 8th, then 10th, etc. All right, over 2n factorial, because again, the uh, factorial number, the n, matches the n in the exponent. So x to the 2n over 2n factorial. So great job, congratulations. This guy right here, let me box it in. This is the power series representation of the cosine function, so that's pretty cool. So you see what we did here? We just generated quite a few terms of the Taylor series model. I looked for a pattern and I found it. And then once you find the general pattern, you write that general pattern and you've got your Maclaurin series.